Effective breathing is a critical skill in all the strokes, and that's certainly true for butterfly. If swimmers can't breathe effectively, they're going to make an already difficult stroke that much more challenging. Let's take a look at the key skills in great butterfly breathing, as well as how to improve them. Hi everyone, Andrew here, helping you help your swimmers get faster. And in this video, we're talking everything butterfly breathing. We're going to go over why it matters, what swimmers need to do, the challenges of executing effective breathing, and then how to overcome those challenges. Finally, we'll wrap it up with some sets that you can implement with your swimmers today or use for inspiration to design your own sets. Let's get started. So why does breathing matter in butterfly? Well, the reality is, is that swimmers have to breathe. In every event over a 50, they're gonna have to breathe, and if they're not breathing well, there's gonna be problems. What are those problems? Well, well, swimmers are gonna have to come up higher in order to breathe because they have to make sure that their mouth clears the water so that they can actually get air in. The more the shoulders and the hips come up, the lower the hips are gonna go. And the lower the hips are gonna go, the more resistance swimmers are gonna create as they move through the water. The more resistance that they create, the slower they go, and the harder it is. And if you've swum butterfly, if you've watched swimmers swim butterfly, you know that as soon as butterfly gets hard, things get real ugly, real fast. And everything we can do to avoid that situation is something we wanna take advantage of. So with poor breathing comes less speed, less endurance, slower times. And so swimmers have to find a way to breathe that minimizes how high they come up to breathe and also helps them get back into position as quickly as possible. The better they can do that, the less resistance they'll create as a result of the breath and the faster they're going to swim. And it's gonna be a much more enjoyable experience and they're gonna be able to hold that speed for a whole lot longer. So what is great butterfly breathing? Well, it's as high as necessary and as low as possible. So swimmers have to be able to get air consistently, but they wanna do so while minimizing the disruption of alignment as much as possible. So they need to get high enough that they can get air and they wanna stay low enough that they can stay level as they go. So one of the great ways to think about that is keeping the chin low as they breathe, as low to the surface as possible, and then getting the head back down fast so they can get out of those negative positions as quickly as possible. And so thinking about as high as necessary, as low as possible is a great way to conceptualize it for swimmers. And another great way to think about it is trying to minimize the difference between the breathing stroke and the non-breathing stroke. The non-breathing stroke is going to be pretty level. Can they maintain that same level position in the water even when they add the breath? That's the goal. They want to be as close as they can. And the more effectively they can do that, the closer they can get, the better the breath. In terms of timing, a great way to think about it is to breathe with the pull. And then they want to race the recovery back, trying to get back in line before the arms come around. Again, as high as necessary so they can get their air as low as possible to minimize any disruption of alignment. And the smaller the difference between the breathing stroke and the non-breathing stroke, the better. And in terms of timing, start the breath as they pull and then get the head back down before the arms enter the water. If they can execute those relatively simple skills, if they can execute those relatively simple skills, they're going to be set. So if we watch breathing here, what we'll see is that she's keeping the head really low. She's staying really low to the water and that's allowing her to get that breath. It's as high as necessary. She's getting air, but it's also low as possible. You can see that chin is right on the surface of the water and she's being really effective at staying low throughout the breath. And that's going to maintain her alignment as much as possible while still allowing her to get air. So she can accomplish both objectives, which is lots of air, as little resistance as possible. She can do that, she's on track. So we've got another swimmer here, and what you can see here is he's gonna alternate a non-breathing stroke and a breathing stroke. And what you're looking for is you can see the head's gonna come up a little bit, and then the non-breathing, it's gonna come up a little bit more on the breathing stroke. And he's doing a really good job of minimizing the difference between the two. You can tell when he breathes, but it's not super obvious, and that's gonna allow him to maintain as level a position in the water while still getting the air he needs and that's ultimately going to help him accomplish the objective of getting oxygen while minimizing how much resistance he creates when he breathes. So low and fast is what we're really looking for. Another aspect to pay attention to is watch how she gets the head down before those hands come around. So right there, the head's going back down and her head is down by the time the arms enter the water. So that's a key aspect of recovering the breath. Not only do we want to make sure it's low, but we want to make sure that swimmers get out of that negative position as quickly as possible and get back into a line with each stroke. We'll take a look at it under the water so that we can get a better sense of the timing. So if we watch here, she's going to start that breath as she starts to pull. So right here, the head's down. She starts to pull. Right there, you can see that that breath starts to come up. The head starts to come out. And then from a timing standpoint, bam, her head's back in the water 
before those arms get back in the water. So breathing with the pull, and then the head is back down ahead of the recovery. So effective breathing is ultimately simple. Breathe with the pull, get the head back down before the end of the recovery, and keep the breath as low as possible. So why is it so difficult? First of all, swimmers are worried about choking, and rightfully so. They've probably had one or two experiences that they got a little bit too much water when they took a breath, and that's not something that they want to repeat. And so from their thought process, conscious or not, it's better to be safe than sorry. They're going to breathe a little bit higher than they probably absolutely need to. They don't want to take any chances. The other aspect is that too much butterfly with weak swimmers kind of creates survival breathing. So they're just trying to get to the other side of the pool. And in order to do that, they need to get air and they're going to make sure that they get air. So they're going to use strategies that definitely guaranteed get them air, even if it's not necessarily the fastest way. And so if swimmers are swimming a lot of tired butterfly or they're just not strong enough to swim it well in the first place, they're going to start up developing bad timing and bad habits, which is something we want to avoid. And if swimmers are coming to you already established those habits, well, we've got our work cut out for us in terms of changing those habits. Lastly, small differences can have a major impact. Just a small change in the angle of the breath can have a big impact on the angle of the hips, which has a big impact on how much resistance that swimmers create as they move through the water. The problem is, is they can't necessarily feel those tiny changes. If they've performed thousands or ten thousands of breaths, they can't feel subtlety anymore. They're not going to be aware of the consequences of what they're doing because they've done it so many times. It just feels the same. And if they can't feel a difference, they're not going to be able to execute on a difference. So a lot of swimmers have fear about breathing too low. They simply have bad habits due to past experiences, and they can no longer feel the impact of their breath. So we have to overcome these challenges if we want to help swimmers improve their breathing. As with most skills in swimming, breathing in butterfly is ultimately pretty simple. Unfortunately, simple isn't easy. So we have to find ways to help swimmers learn how to breathe low, how to breathe fast, how to time their breath with the pull and get the head back down prior to the recovery if we want them to improve their breathing. We're gonna have to help them feel these key skills because if they can feel these key skills, then they're more likely to be able to change them. One, they need to understand what needs to happen. Two, they have to be able to feel what needs to happen. And then three, they need to be able to execute on what needs to happen. So let's check out our options for helping swimmers improve their breathing. First things first, swimmers need to make sure that they have effective overall arm to leg timing in butterfly. If they don't, they're going to really struggle to breathe effectively because the whole rhythm, the whole timing of the stroke is going to be off. So if the timing's messed up, the breathing's going to be a challenge. When, when their timing's off, they're just going to find a way to breathe whenever it suits them. They don't care if it kills their speed. They can't tell if it kills their speed. They just need to find a way to breathe and they're going to fit it in whenever they can. If the arms and the legs aren't doing the right thing at the right time, there's not going to be an effective time to breathe, so they're just going to pick one. So poor timing means poor strategy in terms of breathing. So if swimmers are struggling with their timing, you need to work on that first. And since timing is a video in and of itself, I've already made one. And if you click on the tab that pops up over there, you should be able to check that out. Now, their timing doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be good enough so that it's not obstructing the breath. So if they have timing issues, work on that, try to get that better, and then go about trying to fix the breath. So assuming they've got decent overall butterfly timing, skate drill is the first place to start in terms of improving the breath. So it's a simple strategy that just allows swimmers to feel what it's like to stay low and how to stay low. And so it's a great starting point for helping them conceive and understand how low they can breathe and how effective it is to breathe that low. So what they're going to do is they're just going to get that feel during skate drill, and then they're going to try to translate into their swimming using some of the strategies we're going to discuss later on. So the idea is to skate the chin on the surface of the water, hence the name, and that helps swimmers understand how to breathe forwards rather than up. If they breathe up, they're going to lose contact with the water, and if they breathe forward, they're going to be able to stay on the surface of the water, and they're going to be able to breathe really low. They also have to breathe when they pull, because if they don't, it's not going to really work at all. So as soon as they initiate the pull, they initiate the breath, and so swimmers can work on the timing of it as well learning how to stay low and execute the breath in the timing with a pull. So here's the idea. Again, trying to breathe really low with the chin on the surface of the water and trying to hold that position. You don't need to dive down in the front of the stroke. You're trying to hold the surface and hold the chin on the surface so that they can really feel how they're skating forwards rather than coming up. And again, if you watch here, he takes the pull and then breathes as he pulls. And that's really what we're looking for here. So as the arms start to pull, that's when the breath goes and then skating the chin on the surface, which helps them understand how to breathe low and the feedback of the water lets them know if they're executing it correctly. Next strategy is either swimming with a snorkel or swimming without breathing. 
And so a lot of times the best way to help swimmers understand a skill is to take it away. And that's certainly true of breathing as well. So if you take away the breath, it becomes more obvious of the impact of the breath when swimmers add it back in, when they go back to regular butterfly. And we talked about earlier, a lot of swimmers can't really tell or feel how the breath is impacting their stroke, but by taking the breath away and then adding it back in and then going back and forth between the two, they can start to tell the difference between when they're not breathing and when they're breathing, and they can take that gap and try to shrink it. And the more they can shrink it, the less resistance they're going to be creating as they breathe. And it's that awareness that we create by having them use a snorkel, by swimming without breathing, that allows them to make that progress. So the goal is to have great alignment without the breath, which should be relatively easy to do. And then they have to add the breath back in and they want to maintain the same great alignment. If there's a difference, they want to shrink the difference. The more they can shrink the difference, the better the skill is. So let's say if the non-breathing stroke is a 10 and they start out with a breathing stroke that's rated at a 5, if they can get it to a 6, they've improved. If they can get it to a 7, they've improved even more and so on. They may not make it to 10, but the closer they can get, the better. Now in terms of using a snorkel or just having them not breathe, well, the snorkel allows them to do more work with less stress. If you're doing no air butterfly, you're going to have to give them more rest. You're not going to be able to do anything more than 25 with any sort of volume. Whereas with a snorkel, you can do a lot more work and you can do it with less stress. One, the value is that they get more work in, so they get more practice in. But two, it's just not as stressful either, which is beneficial as well. So a great strategy for helping swimmers learn to feel the difference when they breathe or when they don't and allow them to contrast and go back and forth between the two to create even more awareness. So here we've got Butterfly with a snorkel, and as you can see, his head's going to rise up a little bit based upon the rhythm of his undulation. However, he's not coming up to breathe, and if he uh, didn't have the snorkel on there, he's not getting any air. And so creating that position, allowing him to feel that position as he moves through the water, and then once we add the breath back in, he can try to maintain that same low position, that same low rhythm as much as possible. And the more times he can go back and forth between those two skills, the more effective he's going to be at learning how to breathe with maintaining great alignment and keeping a breath that's lower and less resistive. The next strategy is using different breathing patterns. So whether it's no breath, breathe every three, breathe every two, breathe every one, and mixing those all up, it builds upon the previous strategy where there's a contrast between not breathing and breathing. Now we're going to have that contrast happening all the time within the same lap. And the more swimmers can manage different rhythms, different timings, and different breath patterns, the better they're going to be able to execute a great breath regardless of the situation. So breathing every three is going to feel a little bit different than breathing every two, which is going to feel different than breathing every one. But in every case, the goal is to have swimmers execute a really, really great breath. Regardless of how they're going to race, you want them practicing all of the different breathing patterns so that they can master all of them so that they can improve the overall skill in breathing. So they want to have great breathing regardless of their rhythm. And so once they can execute a single good breath, it's time to start challenging that with different breathing patterns. They can master a lot of different versions of the same basic skill. They're going to have better overall mastery of that skill. The more swimmers can learn how to create speed, create efficiency, create endurance with different breathing patterns and switch back and forth between the different breathing patterns, the more effective they're going to be at breathing in butterfly. A lot of swimmers tend to come up really high, again, because they're trying to make sure that they get air. And what they do with that is they use their hands and their arms to lift themselves up. Now, if we're sneaky, we have them close their fist, we take away the hands, well, now it's going to be a whole lot harder for them to elevate to take that breath. And then they can start to feel the impact of it. It'll prevent them from coming up too high and disrupting alignment because they can't do that. They can feel what it's like to actually stay relatively level and stay relatively smooth when they take that breath. Then, having felt that, you can add the hands back in, make sure that they still get an effective pull, but tell them they have to have that same feeling, that same sensation when they breathe. It's forward rather than up. By using the different hand postures, swimmers can start to become aware of whether they are and to the extent that they're lifting in the water. And with every skill, if you can feel it, you can change it. So we just have to find a way to help them feel it. You can use lots of different hand positions. Anything that makes the hand smaller, makes the hand less effective, is going to be useful. And you can use it when swimming regular butterfly. You can do it with skate drill. You can do it with any drill. And it's going to help them learn to stay low and learn how to create force backwards so that they move forwards rather than down so that they go up too much. One, it'll probably help their pull. But two, it's going to help them stay more level and breathe lower as they move through the water. Next up is using different training aids. So again, we talked about how awareness is key for the feeling the impact of the breath. And once they can feel it, they can change it. Using different training aids can help them feel how much resistance they're creating as they move through the water. So overspeed. The faster they go, the more drag they create. The more drag they create, the more they can feel the drag. 
So having them go really, really fast and then practice breathing and not breathing, it's going to be more obvious how badly the poor breath will slow them down. They're going to feel all that pressure, all that resistance by going really fast, particularly with fins. It becomes a lot more obvious. The more obvious it is, the more they can feel it, the more they can change it. The same idea happens with clothing. You have them wear a t-shirt, you have them wear shorts. They're going to feel a lot more resistance as they take that breath. And then when they take the clothing off, they're going to be more aware of how the water is flowing over their body. They can feel the difference between when they breathe and when they don't breathe. Again, feel the difference. You can start to change it. So that's what we're looking to accomplish, especially with the clothing. Weight belt. Whenever swimmers breathe, the hips are going to drop a little bit. If they've got a weight belt, the hips are going to drop a lot. So that can be really useful because, again, it creates more clarity about the impact of the breath. Whatever a loss of alignment they experience when they breathe, it's going to be a whole lot worse when they have that weight belt. So they're going to understand the consequences of their skills when much more clarity, the more clear they are about what's happening, the easier it is for them to create change and the easier it is for them to fix those skills. So training aids can be really great regardless of what drills or activities you're doing because they help swimmers better feel the impact of the breath on their alignment and on the resistance they create as they move through the water. As with all skills, using different performance challenges can be really valuable for helping swimmers change. So have them go at different speeds, different stroke counts, different stroke rates, different combinations of the two. It forces them to explore different ways of moving through the water, and that's going to help them improve their skills and help them learn to execute skills in a lot of different situations. So you want to challenge skills in many different contexts. Novelty, variety, they build skill. Just doing something different can be really useful and really powerful. More importantly, with performance challenges, it's not about going as fast as possible or taking as few strokes as possible or the fastest rate that's possible. It just has to be something that they're trying to accomplish. And you're pushing them and having them swim in different ways. So it doesn't have to be maximal. It just has to be a moderate challenge. They have to swim differently. And the more that they can be forced to swim differently, whatever it is, the more effective. And so if you're having swimmers try to go a little bit faster, that's going to affect how well they can breathe and how they breathe and what they feel when they can breathe. Same thing with higher or lower stroke rates, same thing with the higher or lower stroke counts. So it's just a way to challenge swimmers and get them to swim differently in lots of different ways. And that can help them improve their skills. This is a great set that it really focuses on the skill of butterfly breathing. So they're going to go three rounds through. 425 skate drill. They're just going to descend one to four. It doesn't have to be a big descend. They're just trying to go a little bit faster. Focus here, breathe on the pull, skate the chin on the surface of the water. Then they're going to go 425s, butterfly, odds or no air, evens are breathing every three. They're going to try to be as level as possible when they're not breathing. And then when they take the breaths on the breathe every three, they're trying to skate on the surface just like they did in the drill. Then they're going to repeat that same basic pattern two more times, except the skate drill they're going to build, and then they're going to go strong on the third section. And they're going to go breathe every two and then breathe every one on the next full stroke butterfly sections. So we're challenging them with different breathing patterns. We've got the drill, but they're creating speed in different ways. And we're having them alternate between not breathing and regular breathing. And that's gonna really help challenge them and push them to figure out the difference between the two and then try to take what they're learning during the skate drill and make that happen with the actual butterfly breathing. So we're doing our best to help them feel the key skills and then giving them the opportunity to practice those key skills. Next set, they're going to go four rounds. They're going to start off with dolphin kick on the surface with fins and a snorkel and a t-shirt. And that's strong effort. So the focus there is they're just being really great alignment as they move on the surface of the water. The fins add a little bit more speed. The t-shirt adds a little bit more resistance. And the snorkel allows them to not have to worry about breathing. Then they're going to go 50 butterfly with a snorkel. Strong effort. They're going to try to stay as low, as level as they just did on that kick. And then we're going to add the breathing going every other stroke on the next one. And then we're going to add the breathing, breathing every stroke on the last one. And each time they add the breath, each time they add more breaths, they're trying to stay as level, as streamlined, and as effective with the breathing as when they weren't breathing. The goal is to keep the speed the same, the effort the same, regardless of the breathing pattern. So when they add breaths, it shouldn't be slower and they shouldn't have to try harder. They should be just as good with their alignment as they are when they're not breathing. The odd rounds, they'll do the whole thing with fins. And on the even rounds, the 350 swim are going to be without fins. The fins will allow them to create a little bit more speed, create a little bit more awareness of how they're breathing. And then they'll do it as they actually have to do it on the regular butterfly swims on the second and fourth round. So creating a little bit more sensory awareness and then helping them feel how to execute those skills with or without the breath, trying to stay as level as they can and stay as consistent as they can throughout the entire set. Last set, we're going to go fast. And we're going to use the skate drill to help them really lock in the skill, help them learn how to skate that chin on the surface and breathe with the pull. 
They're going to go two swims of eight strokes fast. The first one's no air. The second one's breathe every stroke. So we've got the contrast between being really level in the water and then trying to be really level in the water even when they're breathing. By round, we're going to use different types of resistance to help them become more aware and to better feel how they're moving through the water and the impact of the breath so that they can learn to feel and then change how they're breathing. First two, they're with a t-shirt. Second two, they're with shorts. Last two, are with weight belt. T-shirt's going to create more pressure on the upper body. The shorts are going to create more pressure on the legs. And then they're going to feel more resistance across the hips with the weight belt. In the last section, they have the chance to take off all the gear and just let it rip. And again, the goal is to make the difference between the breathing repetitions and the non-breathing repetitions as absolutely as small as possible. By using speed work here, we're helping them learn to execute these skills really fast. And by using the resistance, we're making it easier for them to feel how well they're breathing or how well they're not breathing. And then they have the chance to do something about that. For more about how to improve arm to leg timing and butterfly, which is the foundation for effective breathing and butterfly, check out the video below.